Hi everyone, it's Adrian here, Paper Diva 67, and I want to do a quick tutorial about how to use holographic embossing powder. I bought this a, I don't know, a few months ago, and it's this one is the one by Ranger embossing powder, holographic, and um, I followed their directions, and I actually wasn't that happy with my results. So I've been fooling around a bit and I think I figured out a way that I really like using it. And I will give you a couple examples right here. Here's a Christmas card with a, a white embossing that I started with. And that stamp has a lot of details. It may not be the best stamp. This one came out really nice. And you see there's a green background and then you get that beautiful holographic shimmer. Okay, I'm going to do this for you two ways. I'm going to show you the first way, which is how they tell you to do it. And then you can compare it to the, the next way, which is the way I decided I think I like better. So the way they tell you to do it is to, um, I'm going to <clears throat> stamp it. I'm actually going to stamp it with just clear because they tell you to use clear embossing powder. So I'm just taking these three images. This is actually from the Recollections Christmas stamps. These are kind of vintage Christmas images. They're really cute. And here's the stamps that I'm gonna use. And so I'm going to use this. I'm using the, just an embossing pad. And I'm going to stamp my stamps and because there's quite a bit of details I really like to make sure that I hit it really well okay and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp it okay and I don't know if you can see there's it's nice when you this this embossing uh, ink is really nice because it has just a tiniest of a pink sh uh, shimmer to it got something in my something in my embossing powder it should not be there anyways when it has that little tint um, it's nice because it shows up nice on the paper you can actually see your image doesn't blur too much in the background so I put my powder on oops and then I like to use just a piece of paper that I folded tap it off See how pretty. Now, when you do it on black, it actually has a nice effect. So this may not be the exact perfect project to show you how much nicer it is. But actually, yeah, it is doing what I thought it would do. It's nice on black, but it's really not, it's not so great on other colors. I found. And so, you know, who wants to just use it on one sheet of paper? So that's what it looks like what's on black. It is, it is nice. It's pretty. So if you want to use it on black, great, go for it. But if you want to get that look on a card like this, you would never get to see that it says peace. It would just totally blur into the background. So this is what I did. The first thing I did was I took my images and... I stamped them with colors, so I'm going to get rid of some of the extra. Okay, and another piece of paper, and I'm going to pour up my holographic powder. Okay, and so I'm going to use three different colors. I just got this color bot block set. I actually bought like five, oh gosh, six or seven of them on eBay for an excellent, excellent price. These go for like ten bucks a pop, and, and um... This was a much better price. I think I bought nine different ones for $36, something like that. So uh, instead of $9 a piece, did I say six a pop? I meant nine. I've seen them for $9.99. Okay, so first I used a, a green shade, and now I'm using this sapphire silk. And I really like to make sure I get a lot of ink on there. And then the last one I'm going to use is this burnt copper on the bottom. Okay. A little more. OK. 
Okay. And then I had kind of pre-positioned these before of how I wanted them to look on my on my tag. This tag is from the Graphic 45 new Christmas collection and I'm working on a on a little swap right now using these papers. Okay, so here's how it looks with the ink and it's really it's pretty. But what I do next is I take clear, okay, clear embossing powder. Clear. If I went straight with the holographic powder, I don't get the same effect. What I end up getting is I don't get that really nice embossing shine that I like to have. It doesn't have as much of a raised image. It just has like a rough, only a rough image. And I don't get kind of the details that I like. Okay, I'm cheating. I'm doing it a different way and probably making a mess. Okay, I like to do a little flick. And then I heat up my images. They get that, once they turn into that shiny, they go from that dull to that shiny. I'm going to turn it so I don't burn my finger. Okay. And there we go. Nice, right? Okay, so this is still kind of warm. What I do is I make sure I have it all ready. I have everything ready. But I take this and I just warm it up a little bit. So I get it kind of almost like remelting it. And you can feel how warm it gets because your fingers start to burn. <laughs> Don't do that at home, people. Okay, I am putting a lot of powder on because I like to make sure it's nice and covered. And this one I'm going to go back to my handy dandy sheet of paper. And, hmm. You know what? It is not warmed up enough for me. So I'm going to do it again. I'm make sure it's really nice and hot. And quickly cover it. There we go. There we go. I don't know if you can see it now, but you can kind of see how it's set up, um, the powder is much more set up. It's on top of the images. And now you want to move this to the side. Otherwise you'll do what I did earlier, which is have glitter all over your kitchen table and floor. <laughs> and voila. You now have this beautiful glittered image. Hope that that is getting it. I'm gonna look through the camera. There. Okay. Real easy to do. Um, just a, one extra step, and I think you just get some really fantastic results because you get both a color and um, the ray. You get enough of the rays dimension, and you get that great glitter holographic effect. All right, well, thanks for watching, you guys. Let me know what you think and give it a try at home. Have a good one. Bye.